Welcome to the second part of this short video series where I show you how I use Notion to organize my life. My name is Janosch and I'm a student and web designer that has been managing their personal life in Notion for the last year. And in this video I want to go into detail on the Para method and generally speaking the underlying methods um, you can use to organize your workspace. These are kind of the basic structure uh, that you give yourself uh, in order to manage incoming inputs uh, and organization itself. It's important to have something like this in place because if you don't then you would have uh, a situation where you uh, kind of get a new input for example like an email or something that you have to remember uh, anything really a new book that you find interesting but you don't really know where to put it and these systems prevent this uncertainty by uh, providing a set structure where you can pretty much organize anything that you have giving you the abil ability to scale up your workspace as well so it doesn't matter if you have uh, 50 items pages whatever in your workspace or five 500, uh, the system still works the same, which wouldn't be the case if you weren't to have this uh, kind of underlying system that puts everything into the right place. Okay, so now let's look at the para method. Uh, what is the para method actually? Well, para stands for projects, areas, resources, and archives. This acronym has been coined by uh, Tiago Forte, who also uh, established the second brain thinking uh, model. And he's done some great work on this, so please check him out. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel uh, down in the description. And now I want to show you what the individual aspects of this system uh, represent. So let's start with projects. Projects are by definition uh, kind of goals or things that you want to do that require you to take more than one action step. So it's not a to-do item, uh, but it's more a project. For example, um, creating a new website is not a to-do item but it's rather a project because there's so many different things that go into this um, and for example setting up your new office space would be a project as well and this is kind of the organizational stru structure in the para method it's where you have projects that represent all of the things that you have currently going on in your life uh, all of the different projects you're involved in and it's uh, supposed to give you a good overview of all the things that you're doing at one time. Let me quickly show you how this works for me. So I have uh, my project set up here and I have a couple of different options. I have the customer projects, I have the online courses and I have studies and further education and personal. And these are the areas of projects that I uh, include in my, in my system. And each time I start a new project, each time I, for example, I've got a new client, uh, I create a project in there. And these projects have something in common as well, which is that they have an end date. So uh, usually these projects aren't just uh, created and then they, are, they will always keep being there. But instead, these are things that have a starting date and an end deadline uh, for the most part. So for example, creating a website is uh, usually a project because you want to finish it until a certain date. Now for the bigger and more general things or more general areas of your life, uh, we've got the second letter, you guessed it, it's the areas as the name already suggests. And uh, these are the live areas in your life. So uh, this is everything from work areas to personal areas. For example, I have a area for online courses, but I also have an area for client projects. So because these are different areas of my business uh, and so I separate them. Also, I have an area for my college. Uh, I have an area for personal things. I have an area for finance and all of these bigger uh, life areas you have. These are areas and then the, the organizational structure is that you have projects within these areas. So for example, a project, as we discussed earlier, uh, could be something like creating an online course. And, and then I have an online courses page on top of that, that uh, has all of the uh, different online courses as sub pages. I'll show you how this looks right now. So I have, when I go to areas, I have the online courses area. And if I open this up as a page, you see I have different resources and here are some of the courses that I've got uh, planned, all courses I've created and so on. So this online course page, this online course area pretty much you know, acts as a kind of parent to all of the things that I do in this area. 
this is just overall a great approach to organize uh, these big life areas and also these smaller projects uh, to kind of make that connection between them. Now, resources are generally speaking everything that you might need in the future, all of the things that are interesting to you. So things like um, books, for example, I'm, I can just speak for my example, but uh, I have books and education in there. I've got restaurants that I really like. Um, I've got companies I uh, find inspiring websites uh, where I really like the design of the website and all those things. So I have multiple categories set up in uh, inside of my resources um, and so I can kind of collect everything that I, uh, that I like, that I want to keep in mind, that I want to save for later um, into one place so that I can always access it whenever I need to. Now, the great thing about these resources in Notion is that you can connect them uh, to other pieces of your Notion workspace. For example, I have mine connected to both my projects and also uh, my notes. So for example, if I have a client project where I might want to implement a new feature or I might want to do something I've not done before, um, I might save some tutorials, some uh, insights on this a specific feature on a specific uh, task inside of my resources uh, page, inside of my resources section in Notion, and then I can reference them in my uh, client project. So I can have this connection um, and then quickly jump between the project and learning uh, about the new topic in my resources uh, area. Now the archive, or you could say archives, but I only have one, um, is a place to put everything that you don't really need anymore. So what I do is when there's a page or something that I don't want to use anymore because I just don't need it anymore or some other reason, uh, then I just deprecate that pretty much and put it into the archive folder. And uh, this way I keep everything that I used to use, but I don't have it in plain sight and I don't kind of get um, annoyed by it uh, by having to see it or kind of I don't have to keep it in my mind but I still know it's there if I might want to reference it in the future and uh, this allows you to clean out your workspace uh, get rid of everything that you don't need while you're usually uh, working in Notion and uh, yeah it just helps you keep clean and keep your workspace minimalistic so it's a great addition to the para method. What makes the system go from good to great is the ability to connect the different parts in your workspace. Um, so the way I set this up is, or the way you could also set this up is, you create databases for the individual parts of your uh, setup in Notion. Uh, so you create a Notion database, like the one I have here for my projects. And now what you do is you add a properties for the different parts of your setup that you want to link. So for example, I have my notes database linked here. Uh, this is just a relation property and this way I can easily, um, for example, if I have a, a note, or if I'm taking notes concerning this specific online course I want to make, I can just right here add this or add this in the notes section and then it will show up here and I can easily uh, access this reference if I need to. Also, uh, I've got this connected to my goals. So for example, if uh, my monthly goal involves this project, uh, that, or if there is a monthly goal that involves this project, which uh, usually is, I just haven't added it in right now, um, then I can also see this right here. This is why it's so powerful to use Notion um, because your brain doesn't think in these uh, kind of straight funnels downwards in these uh, file systems, but it thinks in connections and you can connect different parts of your life and your brain uh, together using this tool and these connections uh, using relation properties in Notion. If you don't know what Notion databases are, I recommend you watch my Notion 101 course on Skillshare or Udemy. Um, it's a four and a half hour long course and it covers all you need to know about uh, pretty much all about Notion, but uh, especially databases are covered and um, yeah, you, you get a great understanding of how databases actually work in Notion. It's not that complicated, uh, so if it, this is something that you want to learn, feel free to check it out. I'll leave the link in the description. That's it already for this video. In the next video, we'll take an in-depth look at the individual parts of the setup. Uh, I'll show you how I set my goals, how I manage projects exactly, and uh, how I take notes. All of that in the next parts of the series, so stay tuned. Leave a like if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel if you, if you like this type of content, 
And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I'll be sure to reply to any one of your questions. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.